Welcome to my lectern line. Now you may say that there's probably not a practical use for power series, maybe other than finding the number pi, but that would be wrong. Here's a good example. What if someone asked you to evaluate this definite integral? Well, you may be uh, hard pressed to try to find the integral of that, but you don't necessarily need to do that if you can write this as an infinite series. And let me show you why. So we can see that this could be written as follows. This can be said to be equal to the integral from 0 to 0 0.1. Instead of writing it like this, we can write it as 1 over 1 minus the quantity x to the, oop, no, I'm going to put a negative in there, negative x to the fourth, like this. So what we've done is we've, we've written it into the form of 1 over 1 minus x because we know what the infinite series of this looks like and now this has the exact same form which means we can now write this and of course I should put a dx on there equal to the integral from 0 to 0 0.1 of and the infinite series of this of course can be written as 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and so forth so we're going to do the same over there this is going to be 1 plus this quantity minus x to the fourth plus this quantity minus x to the fourth quantity square plus this quantity again minus x to the fourth quantity cubed and so forth just like we did over here of course we have to multiply this times dx and now if we multiply that out we say we can see that this is equal to the integral from 0 to 0 0.1 of the quantity 1 minus x to the fourth plus x to the eight minus x to the twelfth plus x to the sixteenth and on and on and on like that times dx. Now this is really easy to integrate, a lot easier than trying to integrate this. So this can now be written as the quantity, the integral of one is x minus the integral of this would be x to the fifth over five plus x to the ninth over nine minus x to the thirteenth whoop that's a terrible looking three over thirteen plus x to the seventeen over seventeen and you get the idea here and of course then we still need to evaluate every one of these terms from zero to zero point one now notice that this infinite series will converge for values of x less than 1 or for absolute values of x between negative 1 and 1. If x is larger than 1, of course when we have very large exponents like this, that number becomes very very big and it will not converge. But for values less than 1 it will converge and since we're asked to evaluate this from 0 to 0 0.1, we meet the condition that x is less than 1. So now let's begin to plug in those values. If you plug in the lower limit, of course, for each one of these terms, we get zero. So we only need to worry about the upper, upper limit. And so this becomes equal to 0 0.1 minus. Now x to the fifth divided by five. Let's see here, that's 0.1 raised to the fifth power divided by five. Yes, we get. So that would be minus 0 0.0000002 plus, now we plug in the next one, and you can see that number is going to get very small very quick. So we get 0.1 raised to the 9 power divided by 9 equals. So this becomes plus, uh, and I'll write as a scientific notation number, 1 plus 1, 1 to two decimal places times 10 to the minus 10, and that would be then minus, then we plug in the next number. You can see when we plug in 0.1 into this term, we get a really, really tiny number. In essence, what we can then say is that these consecutive terms after the first one become so insignificant that we can just ignore them. Now, of course, if you need many, many decimal places, then you keep them, but typically the numbers we're looking for, this would be sufficient. So the answer then is this integral can be evaluated to be approximately equal to 0 0.1. And notice how easy it is to do it like this rather than to try and integrate that and then plug in the limits. And that's how it's done.